Welcome to the Self-Publishing School Podcast. This is the podcast to listen to if you're an aspiring writer or an author who wants to sell more books. On this show, you'll learn how to write and launch a book successfully, all from people just like you and from the most successful authors on the planet. I'm your host, Chandler Bolt, the founder of Self-Publishing School, the author of my new book called Published, and the CEO of selfpublishing.com. For free training on how to publish a book that sells 10,000 copies, go to selfpublishing.com forward slash Free training. Hey, Chandler Bolt here, and joining me today is Andrew Biernat. Andrew is an author and success coach at selfpublishing.com. He specializes in nonfiction, memoir, and children's books. He's also the author of multiple books, including his book, uh, 26 Ways to Break Your Weight Loss Plateau. Um, he's a speaker. He's the host of the Your Personal Growth Personal Brand Podcast. That's actually how we first met, and you can check out my interview on that podcast. Uh, and uh, yeah, Andrew, really great to have you here. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Chandler, number one for having me on the show and, and really number one before that for having me on the team. Yeah, yeah. So um, I guess first and foremost, Andrew, why books? Why did you decide to write your first books even before, you know, years before joining uh, and working with us at selfpotion.com? Yeah, for me, it began at a retreat, a mastermind retreat and went there, got hyped up, pumped up. I was like, you know what? I have something to say. I can write a book. I can write a book. And so I went and I read like four or five, actually maybe even closer to 10 books on self-publishing. And I got so confused. And actually in that pile of books was one of your first books on self-publishing. Uh, and I remember I was like, oh man, this guy's really, I, was, I, I remember exactly where I was. I was. I was in an airport, was reading through your book. I was like, oh, I like this guy's style. I like the way he talks about stuff. And then I read a bunch more books and was just super confused on how to do stuff. And really for me, the, the biggest disconnect was fiction and nonfiction are marketed very, very differently. And the books I was reading, some of them were really fiction focused and some of them were really nonfiction focused. And it just, all the signals crossed. And I, you know, my first book was a little bit of a mess, but I learned a lot. And then I wrote my second book during COVID, which is the one we're kind of talking about here today. And uh, and for me, I just see books as an opportunity to to share insight as well as build a brand, build authority, and, and in a sense, codify and solidify some of your thoughts. Mm. And so your most recent book, 26 Ways to Break a Weight Loss Plateau, um, Stop the Dieting Frustrations and Get Fascinated with Your Fitness Habits. So I think if I'm not mistaken, you wrote that book while you were a, what would you call it? Health, health so trainer? So I was a personal trainer at the time. Yep. Personal trainer. Yeah. So you wrote your book while you were doing that. Why write the book as a personal trainer? Yeah. So at the time, my first book, I was still a personal trainer. So the first book was more of a kind of personal growth type, per, uh, fitness type book. It was a, it was kind of like, kind of like uh, Patrick Lencioni, part fable, part lesson. And mm. it, it was, it, it did not land for our, our target market. So we worked mostly with women in their forties and fifties. And it was like this weird sci-fi fable that like none of them really connected with. Uh, <laughs> and so yeah, really important to nail your target market friends. So, um, but I learned a lot from that book. And the second book was based on a talk that we would give to our clientele at the time. And this talk was chock full of insight. And it was, I think it was 28 ways to break a weight loss plateau or 24 ways. It was a little bit, it was a little bit of a different number, but the basic concept was it was, you know, two to three hours, four hours of content that we could deliver at any time. And so usually if we were teaching in, in our classes, we'd break it up over a couple classes and just kind of run through some of the concepts there and, and kind of let people run loose. But what, what I found was, why don't I take this big beefy talk? talk and turn this into its own book and then maybe spin that into a course and, and a mastermind and some group coaching. And uh, and so I did that. And, it was, and the book was the the vehicle for creating that. Mm, that's great. So obviously, if you're a personal trainer, I mean, this is hitting the nail on the head. But even if you're not, I like the concepts that you talked on in there, Andrew, is all right, taking personal experience, working with people one-on-one -on -one and going from one-to-one to one-to-many -to -one -to through the book. And then also, if you're running any sort of workshops or what, what did you call? Was it, you know, workshops or giving talks? Exactly. Yeah. It was, it was basically a workshop or talk style uh, discussion. And so it was a lot of content already that we had created. And so that became the second half of the book. That was the application mm -hmm. half of the book. And then the first half was more kind of a traditional written type book where it's got stories and how to's and, you know, my, you know, kind of bending your mind a little bit as far as kind of reshaping things. Cool. So I think great lesson in there for people who do workshops or talks is you've already written the book. You maybe just didn't know it yet. 100%. <laughs> and the ability to, to turn those workshops or talks into uh, some uh, into a book and into book content. Um, so let's kind of fast forward a good bit to the relaunch. Uh, sure. And obviously, when you join the team at selfpublishing.com, we kind of send you through a boot camp, take you through a lot of our curriculum. You're working with authors, and uh, we're doing a relaunch so that you're implementing a lot of stuff that we teach. So I guess b backing up a little bit though, why did you decide to relaunch this book, and why should authors consider relaunching their book? Sure. 
one of the big reasons for the relaunch was I made a couple critical errors in creating this book. And I learned a lot in creating this book, almost like anything you do. You, you get to learn a lot in the process of making it. And the book I initially designed, I'll show it for those on video, looked more like a personal growth and development book than a fitness book. It didn't really quite fit the fitness industry mold as far as what people were looking for. And also when I wrote it and published it, I had created it for our current clientele. I had created it to serve a purpose of creating a mastermind. And it did that. I made uh, probably about 4,000, 5,000 gross revenue in creating this, this book and course and everything that went with it. But with that, I actually learned in the process, I was like, man, I don't actually want to be a personal trainer anymore. Uh, and so that kind of started a career transition, but the book was kind of a big piece of that. So I did an initial like internal type release for the book where our clientele got to experience it. And we brought in some revenue and we were able to help a bunch of people, but I didn't then go out to the masses and, and push it and get reviews. So if you, if you find the old copy on Amazon, you guys will see there's one review and it's a one-star review. So I did not push this book at all. I did not send it anywhere. Mm -hmm. So really this relaunch is a reskinning. So we changed the outside of it, took the course out of it and kind of made sure everything was in there that was needed to make sure that you got as, enough value as a standalone book and have, have relaunched it as a way to, in a sense, showcase what's possible when you follow some of our methods. And so it's, you know, in a couple of weeks out, it's up to like 47 plus almost 50 reviews at this point. So yeah, it's going really well. It's it's awesome. It's really awesome to see like if you just work the system, like it worked, like it'll it'll yeah. it'll get out there. Yeah, I mean you've got 47 times as many reviews um, as, as, the, as the first one. <laughs> as the first one. Uh <laughs> using the SPS or uh, using the self publishcom way. So I, I talk about in this book, my book published, um, the different types of relaunches. Uh, and I can't find the page right offhand, but you know, there's the just because relaunch, there's the update or revise or stuff like that. So um did you did you rewrite the book? Was it like, okay, 30% tweaks the content? Like, what did you do on the writing and structure of the book prior to relaunching the book? Sure. So structure wise, what I wanted to do was I wanted to, I wanted to make it palatable where there was no, there was no back end sale. That was what the book was initially designed for was to sell a course. That's what it was created for. And when I transitioned out of the fitness industry, I don't really want to be selling fitness courses anymore. It's not, it's something I enjoy and it's something I have expertise in and I could sell fitness courses in that, but it's not what I want to dedicate my time to. So I stripped out the main purpose for the book existing, right? And so then, okay, so now why is this book here? What, what's the purpose of it? And so for me, the purpose of this book is to still share some of my insights, still be useful and valuable and do it in such a way that it, it can be standalone. It's got everything you need right in there. And it, it can be, you know, you don't have to upgrade into anything else to get the full package. So it was minor tweaks on what was in the inside, just taking out some basic copy of like, oh, go over here to get the course. And changing a couple other pieces, taking out a few of the testimonials because those testimonials also were trying to point people towards some of our other products and turning it more from something that launched into another business to a fully just standalone product that's valuable and has plenty to offer uh, just all by itself. Oh, that's great. And so changing the book to align with the purpose, which now the purpose is to help as many people as possible through the book. Um, previously, the purpose was to help as many people as possible, obviously through the book, but then also get them to take that next step uh, exactly. with the course. Um, so that's great. And and just for, for reference for people, it's page 168 and published. There's five types of relaunches. There's the just because relaunch. So this could, you could do a discounted promo or anything like that. There's additional formats. So maybe you're you're publishing a print book and you previously only had an ebook or you're doing an audio book, right? There's number three is the new and improved version. Um, so this can be, you know, kind of light edits. I think this is probably the bucket that, that, that you were in. There's that number four is the anniversary. So it's is like the 10th anniversary edition. And that's sort of thing. you see that kind of with, with big books that have sold, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of copies. Um, and the number five is the updated and revised. And I walk through this in the book, but the updated and revised is, th is, is the most labor intensive. And it's where most people think that they need to jump to, uh, but it's, it, it might not be necessary. And obviously with yours, you kind of did the new and improved, which I think is a great middle ground where it's like, all right, I'm not going to rewrite the whole book and do everything over again. And I can kind of get the most bang for my buck while also so repurposing this um, for the new purpose of that book. So I guess, can you talk to me about, Andrew, when you're coaching authors, like why should authors relaunch their book? Like, why is this something that people should consider doing? Yeah, I think a lot of times when authors launch a book, especially a first book or second book, there's a lot of competing agendas. I want to build my email list. I want to sell this product. I want it to have this particular type of impact. I want this, I want this. And all those things start to get kind of lost and muddied as you're trying to create this product. And what can really help with a relaunch launch is really tuning it to 
what is the purpose of this particular book? Looking at successful authors, typically they have more than one book. Each book serves perhaps a little bit of a different purpose. Now in each book, it may point towards a couple types of resources. You may get on their email list. You may be pushed towards buying a product. You may get sent somewhere else. But at the end of the day, there's usually one core purpose for the book. And sometimes it's just to inform you. It's just for you to learn. It's just to make you laugh. It's to give you a good time. Or sometimes it is to sell you a product. Or sometimes it's to just get you on their email list, right? So, you know, Atomic Habits is a great example where really the whole goal is, is let's get on his email list, right? And guess what? The dude's got a booming email list and the book is an absolute monster bestseller. And it served its purpose really well. So for your book, as you're looking at, okay, do I want to do a relaunch or not? Analyze the purpose of it. Because a lot of times you probably started it maybe as a passion project. I just wanted to create this book. I wanted to send it out in the world. It's finally my time. I have something to say. And it's important to understand that your book has to serve two masters. It's serving the audience, first and foremost. It has to have a purpose. If it's only serving you, people are going to see that immediately. They're going to read it immediately. You're going to get bad reviews. You're going to get refunds. People don't want that. They don't want a book that only serves you. They want a book that serves them. So start there. Write a book that serves people. But then two, make sure that that book is serving you as well. I think that's where a lot of authors go wrong is they start out with great intentions. They write a book that's going to help people, but then they don't take that next step of writing that book in such a way that it also helps them. So I would say restructuring and relaunching in a way that now serves you if you have a business or it serves your other books. If you have other books, that can be a great way to do it. Mm, cool. That's great. Um, and I, you know, I personally believe that, well, I guess two things. One, if, if you feel like you didn't give, you know, the first time you launched the book, you didn't do it the right way. That's a no brainer. Right. And I love the aligning um, the book, using the relaunch as a way to realign the book with the purpose of the book. I think that's great. Um, if anyone wants to listen to, uh, you know, uh, James Clear has been on the podcast. He talks about how he sold 4 million copies of Atomic Habits. Um, check out that episode on the Self-Publishing School podcast with James Clear. Uh, and then lastly, I think every author should relaunch their book <laughs> in some format. I think it's one of the most underused and underutilized ways to sell more copies of your book, to get more exposure, to get more PR, to grow your business. It's getting your book back on the radar. Pick one of those relaunches and do it. Uh, I think it's something that most authors shy away from and they don't do. And even like we just, we talk about it all the time. And I'm probably gonna be talking about this again at Author Advantage Live this year. Uh, Cause it's just, I don't see people doing it that often. I think it's just, it's a hidden gem. So can you talk to me, Andrew, uh, what are some of the best tips that you have for relaunches or recommendations? And maybe you can kind of overlay that with what did you learn? I'm just going through this process with a relaunch. 100%. And one of the biggest learning lessons is individual contacting works wonders. And I knew this going in and even still, I didn't apply some of it. And, you know, I was able to apply it in process. So I'd reach out to certain people individually and say, hey, I'm relaunching my book. Would you like to be part of the process? Right. I had a little script I had and it, it came off as personal, not as I copy pasted this and spammed a hundred. Right. It came off as, you know, hey, so-and-so, you know, super excited, blah, 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 blah. And it started a conversation. The ones that didn't seem like they started a conversation where it seemed like I was just kind of slapping some information at them. Those got kind of minimal replies. The ones that were more conversational, more relational, those ones got replies. Those ones got people excited. Now, I also am in a lot of group texts, right? I have, I have you know, groups of family, groups of friends. And a lot of times uh, it's easy just to shoot something off into the into the ether, send it to the group text and, and see who bites, right? And so I sent it off uh, to one of my friend's group texts and like total crickets, you know what I mean? Like absolutely nothing back. And a lot of that is some of the social pressure that comes in when multiple people are getting a message that's intended for everyone. When you send something that's intended for everyone, in many ways, it's intended for no one. And you apply that same process to your book. If your book is for everybody, really it's for nobody. And so when I send a message to everybody in that sense, right, just like you, you blast your email list and say, hey, everyone, uh, a lot of times it's going to land only on a couple people. So if I had, instead of sending it out to 12 people all at once, if I had individually messaged each of those 12 people, I would have gotten significantly higher success rate with that particular group of friends, right? Now I applied that to the rest of my groups of people and, and reached out individually and worked way, way better that way. And then I would say, next step is the follow-up. You're going to reach out individually. You have to have a plan for how you're going to keep following up with people in that process. So have a step one, have a step two, have a step three. And really all you what you're doing is you're promising and you're promising what you're going to deliver. And then you go and deliver that. And that enhances relationship, whether you're in sales, whether you're just a, a person looking to improve your relationship with people, make promises and then deliver on those promises. You say you're going to send the ebook or you the PDF copy of the book early, send them that PDF copy of the book early. And then once they get that, you have enhanced that relationship. You follow through on a promise and that makes it more likely that they want to do the same for you. And so in that process of reaching out individually and then following up individually, significant mm. return 
returns as far as number of people that actually went and reviewed, actually went and purchased the book. Mm, nice. So individual reach outs, individual follow-ups helps get feedback, purchases, and reviews. Um, any other tips or things that you learned from relaunching the book um, versus the, the, the first time that you launched the book? Sure. I think a big piece that a lot of people overlook is how critical it is to make your book lend in and stand out at the same time. You want your book to look like it fits in your genre and you want it to be different enough that it's unique and it stands out on the page. And that was something I missed and I kind of whiffed on with my first version of the book. The cover looked very self-help-y and not necessarily fitness and nutrition. And so it didn't really fit in those genres and really fit in those other areas. And so by reskinning it, by changing the outside and, and thinking of it differently, thinking of the outside, not as a reflection of my book, thinking of the outside as a reflection of the customer. Because I look at some of the old books that I have, like Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I think I've got five or six or seven copies of it. Every time I'm at a thrift store, I think I buy one. And every time I buy one, it looks different than the other ones that I have. They've reskinned that book probably 50 times at this point. And it's not because they like the skin of it or, or it looks super special compared to the last one. It's just fitting the genre currently. And that's all the outside supposed to do. It's supposed to fit that genre, but also stand out enough that it gets noticed on an Amazon page or on a bookshelf. And so that was another big lesson mm. that I learned was just yeah. in the marketing of your book. That's all the cover is. It's part of the marketing and don't get bent out of shape if it doesn't look or have the exact symbols or the exact metaphors that you want it to have. It's marketing purely. Mm, that's really great. That's really great. And I think even, uh, you know, if, if people are watching on the YouTube version of this, I'll just share, uh, share my screen and, and look at some of the changes you did. I mean, so you've got the first version of the book here where there's no subtitle, the description um, isn't as good and the cover isn't as good. And then you see all the improvements that you made. I mean, this cover is awesome. It's uh, to your point, it's on genre. Uh, and so this fits with the genre. You're following kind of our, our best-selling book cover process. Talk about this in publish. We talk about this in our training programs. And then you've got a good subtitle, stop the dieting frustration and get fascinated with your fitness habits. And then you've got a clear uh, and compelling book description and some special formatting so that people are intrigued to click in uh, and that sort of thing. So um, I think those are some really great examples of things that you can improve as part of a relaunch. Now let's switch gears a little bit to uh, to lessons learned um, from coaching. So obviously, I mean, you've got thousands, if not 10, your 10,000 hours in fitness coaching specifically. You've worked at the Chamber of Commerce. So you've got business coaching specifically, and then obviously running your podcast. So kind of a wealth of experience in the, co in the coaching world. And that's one of the things that um, really attracted us to bringing you on the team. Now you've been at SPS at the time of this recording, a little over 90 days. So you've had a chance to work with a ton of authors. You've already completed hundreds of calls um, with our authors. Uh, and so I, I want uh, to zero in on some lessons learned. And so if you're listening to this or watching this, and maybe you're, you've signed up with selfpublishing.com, you've got Andrew as your coach, this will be really helpful. It's how to prep for that call. Or if you're not uh, working with us, this will be kind of a sneak peek into uh, what that process looks like. So first question, I guess, for you, Andrew, is what have you seen from your experience so far? What's the number one challenge that most of our authors face as they're starting the process? I think clarity on what the book is supposed to do. I think that's probably the number one issue I run into is they know they need to write a book. They know it's kind of probably going to be about maybe this thing, but they're not sure what it's supposed to do for their audience. And they're not quite sure what it's supposed to do for them. And that's really one of the first things I try to work on with people is who's your avatar? Who is your person? Try to give them a name if you can. And maybe it's an actual real person and it could be yourself 30 years ago, or it could be a friend or it could be a coworker or it could be one of your ideal clients, but give that person a name and you're going to write to them almost like you're having a conversation with them, particularly for nonfiction. You're going to write to that person and this is what you need. Here is the value you're going to get. And when you can have that avatar, it really shapes the rest of the book. Because I started my first book and it was not aimed at my avatar. Obviously, it was a science fiction book targeted at middle-aged women, right? And so it, it didn't land with them. It was not a huge success. They weren't like, well, I many of them read it and they're like, yeah, it's not really my genre, but I read it because I like you. <laughs> and I was like, I really appreciate you. Thank you. But <laughs> at the end of the day, if I wanted to reach a broader audience of my target market, that was not the way to do it. And so for, for hitting your avatar, once you know who your avatar is, the rest of it becomes so simple because you just look at what their problems are. You look at what their challenges are. What are their dreams? What are their hopes? And once you can establish that, you know exactly what you need to deliver because you have something special and that makes you unique. Everything's, Everything's already, been, already written. been written. Everything's already been talked about, unfortunately, right? We're not going to be able to really often blow up a paradigm, right? Once in a while, you know, you know, 
a couple times a generation, somebody comes out with a book that's never been heard of before, right? But typically what we're doing is a different take. It's a different iteration, but it's your personal spin. It's your personal experience. It's it's your insights. And that's what makes your book special. So you're bringing mm. your insights to your book targeted at your avatar, and that's what makes it unique. So that's step one. And then step two is going to be kind of that, that back end of it is, what's that book going to do for me now? Okay, so it's obviously going to help my avatar. It's going to help them. Now, how does this book impact me? Is it going to be for my business? Is this just going to be something I put on my shelf? Is the intent here to send this book to people? Am I going to, is this going to be like the Trojan horse? Am I going to, you know, send this book out and that's going to start conversations? Is this supposed to be a free giveaway? Whatever it's supposed to be, make sure you know that as you're writing it, because that'll determine what some of the resources are that you have in the book. That'll determine, again, some of the chapters that you write about, some of the things that you leave out intentionally, and some of the things that you point to within that book. So I would mm. say if you can come into your first coaching call with some of those things at least thought out, at least half-baked, we can then iterate on some of that. But a lot of times I'll spend the first you know 20 plus minutes of a call just talking with somebody about who does this serve and how does this serve you, right? We need to get both mm. of those nailed down. And then the, honestly, the drafting process is significantly easier and writing writer's block and all the terrible things that happen during drafting becomes less of a problem because it's really clear what you have to do. Yeah, that's great. And so what I would encourage people to do is take this four piece process. Again, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, you can see this. Um, it's in page 58 of published. Um, also in the course, person, pain, promise, price. Define those four things at the start. You're going to write a better book. Like Andrew said, you're not going to have to deal with, with writer's block as much. <laughs> <laughs> There's no promise uh, that you can totally avoid yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, you're gonna have clarity on your voice and all that stuff. I hope you're loving this episode so far. So if you're serious about writing and publishing your book, we would love to chat with you and help create a custom plan. All right, so all you need to do right now is go to selfpublishing.com forward slash schedule. Schedule a 45 minute consultation with one of the experts on my team. All right, let's implement what you're learning in this episode and let's see how we can help with your book. Go to selfpublishing.com forward slash schedule. All right, so follow up question. So uh, what keeps people from getting started with their book? So obviously, you know, you're talking about, you're talking to people after they've made that commitment. We always say that people who pay, pay attention. So they've already paid money. They've signed up for selfpublishing.com. And that, so they're kind of over that initial hurdle, but even still people have these doubts that creep in, these things that, that keep them from getting started. What do you see is the thing that keeps people from getting moving with their book and how can authors overcome that? Sure. And I think it comes back to something we already talked about is oftentimes authors authors think that, well, everything's already been written about. Everything's already been talked about. And who am I? You know, what do I have to add to it? It's just going to be a pile of nothing. And each of us has our own insight to add. And yes, in a sense, that's true. Things have already been written about. Things have already been talked about. Someone that's probably smarter than you, better looking than you, faster than you, all of the other things, every accolade more than you has probably written a book that's similar, but they don't have your stories. They don't have your perspective. They don't have your take on things. And that's what makes the book unique. So my recommendation is that, and that's very much impossible right? Is, is who am I? Who am I to, to have this opinion? Is understand that every author battles that. Every every single Michelle Obama on down the line, every single author battles that at some point. The idea of who am I to write this book? Somebody else could do it better. But at the end of the day, write your book for that one person. Write your book for that avatar, that ideal person who needs to hear it, whether it's yourself from a previous time period, yourself into the future, your kids, your, you know, your clients. Write it for them and write it really, really well and give them what they need to solve that problem. And I promise you that that book can mm -hmm. happen and it can happen faster than you think. That's great. So uh, one of the biggest hurdles for people who haven't finished their rough draft when they start working with us is finishing their rough draft. Any tips uh, for authors starting the process on how to get their rough draft done faster? Yes. I would say there's two camps of people. There's the consistent people who can chug away. I can spend an hour a day and I'm just going to chunk away at the book. And I would say that's probably 50 to 60% of people are just very habit-based, very driven. I can just make this happen. And anywhere from 40 to 50%, kind of the other half are more like I try and then I fall off and I try and then I fall off. And they just have these cycles that they go through. And I'm a try and fall off type. I'm very much, I go all in or I'm all out, right? I've got two kids at home. I'm, I'm busy. I got a lot of stuff that I do. And so I have to really hyper-focus on things in order to really move a big needle, right? If I want to move a big ball up a hill, um, some people can do that just by consistent pushes. I personally have found I do better by making Herculean strides in short periods of time. And so for those people that are like, man, those regular, like just, you know, a thousand words a day, it's just not working for me. I would recommend setting up like a, a mini writer's retreat for yourself. Book a day, book four hours, and then spend those four hours and do a big chunk, right? Ask your spouse, ask your boss, right? If this is for work or, you know, set up time, date that time, go 
guard that time. And that is book time. That is go time. And in that four hours, do a big amount of work, whereas you might not have been able to do that big amount of work spread out into small chunks. Mm, that's great. Um, any common traits that you've seen of the most successful authors that you're working with? I would say the most successful authors, after they launch their book, they continue to talk about it. That, you know, it sounds silly, but we've spent so much time with our books. We have thought them, we have lived them, we have experienced them before we even wrote them. And then we went through this grueling writing process where, you know, we bled onto the page and we got it out of us. And then we finally went through and turned it into a book. And then it comes time to market it. And guess what? Nobody knows about it. Nobody's heard of it. Nobody knows anything. And to you though, it's already been a lifetime and a half. And that's probably the hardest part is to you, it feels like you're beating a dead horse, but to other people, they have not experienced it yet. They don't know it yet. And really what it comes down to is those successful authors. They're the ones that continue to beat the drum. Boom, boom, boom. They keep talking about the book because people still haven't heard about it yet. And that's going to be critical. You're going to get way sick of your book before even half the people in your audience have even heard of it. So that's my recommendation is keep pushing it and don't be afraid to talk about it more than you're comfortable. Mm, that's great. You mentioned this earlier, you know, one of the first calls when we help, when we start working with an author, one of the first calls is a clarity call to get clarity on their book, their avatar, et cetera. Um, what can, if someone's listening to this or watching this and that they, they, you are their coach um, and they're about to have that call, um, what can people do to prepare for that call to get the most out of it? Sure. So first thing we kind of already talked about, be clear on your avatar, be clear on how that book is going to serve you, right? Understand what the purpose of this book is. And then wherever you are in the process, there's typically four parts of our, of a process, right? If you're in the drafting phase, have just a very clear idea of where you are in your drafting phase. Are you at your outline? Are you about to start writing? Understand where your challenges are and try to come with specific questions. So I can answer a lot of vague general questions and I can give you some blanket advice. A lot of that we already cover in the course. So I would recommend spending some time in some of the coursework to get some of those general questions answered. Come with pointed questions, come with specifics that only I can answer for you because it's very individualized. That's what's special about coaching is you get that individualized help. So whether you're in drafting or in editing, you're ready to head into book production, you're ready to go post-launch or you're in the marketing phase, whatever phase you're in, make sure you know what your needs are for your book and then bring those needs and make sure that those are front and center. There's a lot of people I have a first call with and I'm very much directing the call, leading them through. And I ask, you know, do you have any questions, anything, anything you're worried about? And they kind of have some general ideas, but they are not getting as specific of answers as are going to be most helpful. So come in with as much specific questions as you can. That's going to be your gateway to getting the, the extra help and, and this customized help, which you're paying for, um, yeah. that, that can really help take the book from an eight to a 10. That's great. And until you finish your rough draft, nothing else matters. So that should be the sole focus of your questions uh, and, and everything. Uh, Andrew, this has been awesome. Where can people go to uh, buy a copy of your book or, or check out any of the other stuff that you're up to? Sure. I would say go to amazon.com and you can get the book. In there is uh, actually a link to my podcast as well. So your personal growth, personal grand pot, brand podcast. And uh, yeah, just find me on social media. Andrew J. Biernat is typically my handle, different places, only on Facebook and LinkedIn. I don't I don't mess with that Twitter, Instagram stuff. Uh, so um, yeah, that's probably the best, best places to find me. And what was the second question? Um, yeah, that, you, that's the yeah. best place to find you. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, uh, check out uh, Andrew's podcast. Check out the book. Um, Andrew, your your positivity and just, it, it, it's, it's contagious. Uh, <laughs> you're fun, you're positive, you're an encourager. Uh, and so if you're listening to this or watching this right now and you're like, I need some of that in my life <laughs> and I would like Andrew's help with my book. Um, and you, if you want to be have Andrew as your coach, uh, then all you need to do is go to selfpublishing.com forward slash apply, book a call with the team. We'll chat with you about your book, your goals for your book, next steps. We'll help put together a plan and see how we might be able to help. All right. And then if you want Andrew as your coach, just request Andrew as your coach and we will accommodate that if we can. Um, so once again, all you have to do is go book a call with the team, sign up to work with us, go to selfpublishing.com forward slash apply, chat with the team. Uh, we look forward to chatting with you, helping you, and hopefully, if you're lucky, uh, you might have Andrew as your coach. Thanks, Andrew. Awesome. Thanks, Chandler. Thank you so much for watching or listening to this episode of the Self Publishing School podcast. I know there's so many places that you could be spending your time. There's other podcasts that you could be listening to, YouTube channels that you could be watching. So thank you so much. It means the world. Now, I want you to do three things right now if you found this episode helpful. 
I don't know if you know this, but we've got a YouTube channel. It's a companion channel to this podcast. All the video versions of the episode are on the YouTube channel. So number one, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Number two, if you're listening to this podcast, wherever, whether this is Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Number two, I want you to subscribe to this podcast right now so you don't miss a future episode. And then number three, this is probably the most important, leave a review on the podcast. All right, reviews are super important and help this podcast get discovered by other people. So number three, leave a review on the podcast. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next episode.